Uh, welcome back guys to my YouTube channel um, in the series of tutorial what I, what I have decided to cover is basically um, how to basically do scaffolding in ASP.NET basically I'm trying to integrate uh, into the framework core 2.0 in my ASP.NET MVC 2.0 project so most of the time you know like if you have been working in greenfield application maybe you would do a design first basically you generate your focal classes and based on those classes you basically ask the command into the framework command to generate the database for us in this videos we will be doing the reverse basically you know that's i mean in real life you might be working in a process where database already exists you might only working on the on the uh, a business tier of the applications so in that situation let's say we have our database already created and then based on that database we're going to create our models and then we and what what, what <clears throat> once we have our model created model and the db context created by the command we're going to use a, this something called repository pattern this is very popular pattern in in the entity framework and also we can use something called unit to work pattern and once that is all defined and then basically we will use the dependency injection we'll apply dependency injection to our data access object in our business object and everything and basically we will wire up all those code into our all those uh, into all those configuration in our code okay <clears throat> so in this i will be using the visual studio 2017 um oh. Here is here is my open right now. I'm just using Visual Studio 2017, and I'm going to use .NET Core as a template right here. And you can use this option called ASP.NET Web Application. And I just give a name as a database for a solution. Basically, um, that's what we are trying to achieve. We will be our database is already created. I'll show you how our database kind of looks like. And based on that, let's go ahead and create this. We ask the system to create the solution. And then we can choose this template. As you can see right here, we are using .NET Core and we are using version 2.0. And, and we are selecting web application with model view controller option. So it will basically scaffold some of the component that we need. Let's hit OK. So while it is spinning this thing, I will also show you how, how my database currently looks like. So I have this little database called Jira. The idea about this one, I, I, I got the idea on this Jira database is basically in the, there is a, some, you know, Jira is, is basically a bug management system. Is, 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 um, I think it is a part, it's a company, is called Atlassian. Maybe that's what they basically, it's a really popular, a lot of companies that I have noticed they use it. It has a really nice feature for the bug management for the, you know, whether for a small small companies or big companies, it's really really nice feature. Based on that, basically, I create a simple uh, database. So whole idea is like the most important uh, table here is a Jira issue. Um, a Jira issue, it's basically you know, Jira has to know the associated project. That's why project ID. We have a table for project. And the reporter, the user who reported the Jira, you know, bug, and then who is so with this Jira belongs to, which developer or QA or in the system, okay? So, and and then of course there is all these foreign keys basically saying what's the priority of the Jira. I mean, if they have higher priority, what's the issue type and issue status, whether resolve or not resolve, all those kind of things. So, um, <clears throat> I designed this database based on based on I think I was just. I found some document on, on, on Google and then based on that document, they have like UM diagram or something based on that I created this. It's not complete of the Jira because Jira is really big application. It's kind of like a partial Jira <laughs> of the database. Okay, so that is that. Well, now our database is here. In, it's running in my local database, local server. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let me see what's going on here. Oh, that's not it. Okay, so many instances are running. Let me go ahead and kill some of them. Oh, 
Okay, so it created this uh, database for solution for project for us. And by default, you know, we have something like we have more, we have a controller, it's just a simple home controller here, and we have a model folder already created for us. Basically, I haven't done anything. Basically, I just use a template so far. Okay. So now, because we, we decided to use Entity Framework Core 2.0, even before that, we just want to make sure um, all the dependency here, all our server-side dependency is inside this folder called NuGet. As you can see, this is the this that's the single DLL, right? They integrated a lot of the, the ASP.NET Core related DLL into core.all into in, in, in 2.0. So right now, the very first thing we need to do, we need to download, we have to use it using NuGet Package Manager, we're gonna we're gonna download some of the module related to Entity Framework 2.0. Okay, so I have a very simple list right here. Very first thing we need to know, we need to grab this DLL. This we need to download this library. So you know, like there's two ways to do it. Some people use this tools, go to tools right here, and you you can use a package manager console, and from there you can also use the install command to install it. Or if you like GUI version, then of course we can use the NuGet Package Manager. We can go and it search for this guy. Of course, not into the install. We need to browse it and it find it here in different core. It is the most recent latest version is 2.0 because our project is also 2.0, which kind of makes sense. We're not going to go down and so this is the latest version. I'm going to go ahead and ask it to install it. Okay. The next thing we need to uh, install is a tool because we need to use a tool to scaffold. So we need to install this. I'm going to close this one. This is extra project. I don't know why. Maybe I click something there. Okay, we can download the tool also. And also, this is 2.02. That's 2.02. That's fine. Okay. So it is complete. So just always make sure what is what, all the DLL that has all the dependency, new git dependency that for our project is our new git. This is by default it was already included, and this is the new DLL for in related to Entity Framework Core for the SQL Server. We downloaded that, and I mean this one here, and these two. Okay. So now next thing we can do, we can go into uh, tools here. We can go into um, New Git Package Manager console. In here, we need to run this command. I will tell you what's going on here. So, oh, I don't mean to. I don't mean to run this right away. It's, it's trying to. Seems like it's okay. So right now, this is the command we're gonna run. We're gonna say scaffold db context, and we need to specify our connection string. This is the default connection string, of course, and then we need to, the second parameter is the, in the the DLL, and this option right here. We are saying basically create all those model objects for the given database for the given database into this model folder right here so of course this uh, right now yeah because that that database even it, that that connection string is not even correct that that's why it's it's a hey, that's not valid connection string it fell which is okay let me modify um my connection string, my, my server name is this, so I have to change that. 
instead of this. And the name of my database is, as I showed you before, it's a Jira. It's the name of my database, Jira. Okay, that is that is what I should have run. Okay, so we go in here. I'm going to say enter. The command is very simple. This is basically scaffold DB context. <laughs> it's so fast. As you can see right now, based on based on our table, it created a bunch of new uh, code for us. These are our, um, for example, we have a table called avatar. It created an avatar. I mean, we have, uh, you know, the, the Jira issue. It created a table called Jira issue. And the most important thing was this. It created, based on the our table database that we specified, it created this DB context, Jira context object for us. Okay. <coughs> So far, so good. You know, like the the the, you know, imagine we, this tool is kind of really cool because we don't have to worry. Otherwise, we don't have to, um, we don't have to write all this code by hand. You know, so we basically is careful. Our system, hey, we have our database. Hey, it's a connection and string. Go ahead and just create the model for us, and then just dump it wherever we specified our directory. In this case, it was model. All our um, domain model objects are not created. And not only that, it also created our uh, DB context here. So, uh, however, you know, like when I designed, I would like to be uh, like to really um, ha have this in a proper place. I don't, I don't like have this Jira context in the same where my model objects are. So um, this is my design pattern. I mean, like you don't really have to follow this pattern, but it, it would be really neat because then you know all your uh, data access layer, all your, you know models in one place so kind of neat so I'll just create a folder here I'm going to call DB which has to do with the database so um, basically create a class here I'll just copy this Okay, here's my Jira context, but its its naming space is still pointing to the models. I don't really like that one, so I'm going to say um, okay, it's a dot db because that is that is inside the db folder. So I'm going to give that as that name space. And because now it doesn't know what avatar, what these model are, so we need to do do a name resolution here. They are inside that name space. We can okay. So our context is right here. Uh, imagine I don't know how much you guys are familiar with generating code from the model first design. In, right now, you know, like all this configuration is inside one file. It's huge amount of configuration right here because. Uh, it has to do all of this because it has to uh, match with the whatever data type we have in back in database. So, uh, for example, this particular column, the avatar type, is is um, has a max length of 255, and whether it's Unicode, it's a bar char. So that's why it has to do all those kind of thing. Imagine we have to do model and we model first uh, design, then we had to write this by hand. It's the same thing that is doing behind this scene for us. But um, okay, this is a huge amount of code. Um, it's a really huge method in one file. But you can basically um, there is a way to basically keep each of these entity in one file. In if you have been, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna since it is not model first approach, so I'm just, I'm just gonna leave the way it is. Okay, the next thing we can do, we can create our. Um... Okay, so next thing, the next thing we can do, we're going to create our repository. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new folder here.
um, okay, it's a repository, and then let's create some, you know, um, I'm going to create one interface here. We can add an interface. Let's call it a generic. This is a generic repository, meaning like basic search, basic CRUD operations would be in a this this uh, interface would provide basic CRUD kind of app feature to our application. So this is our interface here. And oops, this interf we can expose some method here. Some of the method we can expose, we should be able to, um, of course, insert. Uh, let's not only that we can make a generic version of so let's call it T entity. Where this T entity is just a POCO class, okay? Very simple restrictions. So um, then we can do something like we can define method called insert, and we're going to say T entity. This is our entity here. This is our insert signature here. Then define some other method like delete because we should be able to delete the entity and of course we should be able to update what we are updating is the entity and we can define some <clears throat> async version of the entity of the some to get the data, we're going to say get async. We're going to use param so that you know I can pass any any kind of data type. It's going to be array param object. Let's call it ID. And <coughs> We should we we should define some we can define a task of list of entity. We can define we can say get get async. So here in this case, basically, I don't know how much it, it, it would be really, really cool if we can make it really a, uh, if we can pass the lambda expression for the given, given, for the given object, for the given entity, that would be, that would, this method would be really useful. So to do that, we can define, um, we can use, we can define expression and use some func here funk of t entity and the second so basically we define at least a funk that returns a boolean okay and let's give it a name as filter we, these are default parameter so uh, this is it doesn't know what that one. Let's go ahead and do a name resolution here. They are, this inside, this expression reside inside the link expression namespace, and this can be the first parameter for our uh, guy here. So idea about this one is like later on we can invoke. I'll show you once you know everything is done. That this this method would be really really useful. Um, sometime you know like we can we should be able to get our property based on certain order and to to be to be able to do that we can define another property here we call the func this can be i queryable of our entity in this get t entity here okay 
And the second parameter is I queryable of t into t. Oops, why this kind of funk? That was my, I had a typo in my spelling. I queryable of my entity here. Yeah, I was missing that. That's what it's complaining about. Okay. Something like this. So, these are the basic. Or we can also define the one that if we do, if we need a pacing or all those kind of thing, we can define that kind of um, API also. But in this case, we don't really need it. Why is still complaining? This is my first parameter. Oh, because this this is also a default parameter. But if the user doesn't pass, we don't have to do anything. I didn't get ordered by. I was missing the parameter. Okay, so this we have once we define this basic signature here. Okay, that is that. Now we need to implement this. Of course, without implementation, we need to define this generic repository. How the implementation um, uh, why there is extra seals? Let me go ahead and rename this guy. Yep, change it that. Okay. And of course, it's also a generic version of it, T entity. And as you guess, it's going to implement this repository. I mean, that interface that we defined earlier has that. And then we need to specify our constraint where we need to tell what that entity is, where this guy is a class. Of course, now it says, "Okay, hey, you are you, you, it forces because it's our interface. It asks, you, please go ahead, make sure you implement this interface. So we go ahead and implement this interface. So make all this method. It's our public method here. Oh, let me, let me change this. Yeah, because I use the second option, that's why it is like complaining about the, when I added the public, you know, exit, public accessifier. Okay, so anyway, so of course right now we have this, but how can we make So we we need to be able to inject our DB context, our Jira context in this case, to this our generic repository. That without context, it wouldn't be able to. So um, let's define a constructor. What is that constructor? CTO. I'll type. Here's my generic repository. In this repository, should we should have this Jira context? 
from our uh, yeah. Jira context. I'm going to name it as context. So basically, this can be a constructor index, and into, into the this this before we should be able to create this object instance of this guy, we need to know the Jira context, right? Um, okay, and then we just defined a read-only property here called our Jira context, and we're going to say a context. And then we basically we need to set it this. We can set our whatever the constructor comes out. And then of course we need to know remember like this class right here to be able to work for any classes. We also need to define another property, uh, another field here. Um, read only field, and it's going to be a DB set. DB set of T into T, and let's call it uh, DB set. It doesn't know what the DB set is because we need to resolve the namespace here. It is inside the into the framework core namespace. Okay, so um, we have this DB set. So how do we initialize that DB set? To initialize this one, we're going to say, all right, this dot underscore is my DB set. We, sh we should be able to do that using our, uh, our this, the context object. And it has a set method. What we're setting is that this T entity. And of course, this is a method. Okay. So these are so basically let's separate this out, right? No, the reason um, read only properties. Okay, in reason this. Okay. Now we we should be able to we should be able to implementing our method. Right, first method we need to implement is delete. That deleting as you guess now should be pretty easy. Thus we have the DB set, and then we should be able to just call remove method, and then to it just pass that entity that we're trying to remove. That is that is basically implementation of that API delete. This implementation of this one would be a little involved, so I, I would make that as the last implementation. Let's complete the insert and then the rule. The insert is, as you might have guessed, pretty should be pretty simple, just like this. The DB underscore just the add method right and then what we're adding is the entity that comes in and the update is if you have been working with the entity framework is updating is pretty straightforward also we need uh, to update something we need the context and we got the context here and we're going to say entry entry method into it you're going to specify the entity that we are updating but we need to change the state here because we need to we need to let the system entity framework know that the, the object has changed so we need to set that flag to modified because we basically call this update when it's modified, right? So we need to do that. Okay, let's implement this guy. 
git async by the IDs. Because we are using, um, and this one, gets, since we are returning t in task of this, we are into, into we are returning a delegate here. So we need to, since it's going to be um, a sync method, so we need to specify this as a sync. And then here. Why wow, it is complaining this squiggly? Oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. In return, when we, this is a pattern, of course, you know, like if you, um, for any async method, you need to have await as a corresponding return. So this DB set has find async method. And how we're gonna find is by ID. See, the, the this signature is, so since our, we define our parameter as also exact same type as this find async, so we just can pass the parameter that comes in. That is the implementation of this to get. So uh, this one, let's put this in since it is little uh, involved. So that way we can we can see our, what our method signature looks like. We can see our parameter right here, and we have two two of these parameter. So let's go ahead and implement this one. So this implementation also shouldn't be that. Oh, it's why it is complaining. Okay. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna say, okay, if there is a filter when the user invoked that method, is there? A, if there is a filter, then even let's even before this, let's define a little uh, variable here. I queryable of this t entity. Oops. I queryable of this entity in this code query, and how do we get that? It's from the DB set. And then, if the filter is there, we can say filter into the where, we just pass the filter. So cool. That is, this is awesome. That is all we have to do. And then, next we're also going to see whether order by clause is also is specified if this one is also specified I don't know why my mouse cursor goes two of this parameter If that's the case, we're going to say, all right, return, and we're going to say order by, is our query, and we need to return this guy as to list of async. Remember, we have, because the, the idea is we have to return the task, task of list of the entity, okay? So that's why we need to do this. And However, we need to, uh, if there is a no order by, we need to have this return, which will be taken care by this clause right here. So we're just going to return this away. What we're returning is a query to list a sync. That should, okay. So right now, so our basically what we, well, what we basically we are creating our architecture. We are basically our API. Um, we have our base classes. Later on, all our repository, maybe later on we'll have a repository, repository let's say, uh, for a Jira issue repository. And this repository, 
we'll be using this out as a base class here. Okay, so we have our um, interface, basic generic interface also defined. We have our implementation. We, ha we have our generic implementation complete. Things are looking good. Okay, next thing we can do, let's say um, in here, the very first thing we need, um, to, I have this very simple object called mail server here. To provide the basic CRUD operation to mail server, let's go ahead and define. I'm, I'm choosing this one because this one doesn't have a lot of, it is kind of like an isolated entity, it doesn't have any object graph. Okay, so mail server, let's define um, Whenever I'm designed, I, I basically I would um, I would create I mail server. First, I will define the interface. This interface only is specific to let's say you might have a need of a specific a specific uh, method that is only pertinent to this method, this uh, repository, the mail server repository. That kind of method goes into this interface so right now we which uh, this is just the interface we don't have a need of that method yet we just I'm gonna just leave it empty so whenever need arises you know as we start developing our project it becomes bigger as our requirements start coming in and then you will realize the need that's when you will um, put that Now I have this interface. Now we can define our repository, our class. We can define in here also. We just if class mail server repository. And as you might have guessed now, of course, it will be inheriting from generic repository. And then in this repository, we specify our, our um, model. It's going to be a mail server. And this is also, second thing, this will be implementing this base class. I'm inheriting from this base class and also implementing iMail repository interface. Of course, it, right now it doesn't know what this guy is, so we need to resolve that, that name resolution. And why it is complaining? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, it is complaining because remember like our generic repository, we need to, um, so we need to, uh, we need to define a constructor for this guy. This is our pattern. Here is a mail repository and this guy need to pass our Jira context, let's call it, let's call it context, and then remember like we're just going to call the base constructor here, in the constructor we just need to pass the context. Why it is complaining? Oh, you know what? It's because it is. Uh, I need to delete this one because when we actually scaffolded this one, it, it but it also created this one Jira context. We have. I'm going to delete this because uh, the base basically contains the one from the DB con from the DB namespace, not from this. Um, model namespace, that's why it is complaining. So I don't need this one, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Because I have this uh, Jira context here inside the DB folder. So now it doesn't know... Um, go, I'm going to go ahead and resolve this one now. It knows, okay, that is from the DB. Okay, now this, this is going to be our basic pattern. 
this is how our um, repository basically gonna look like okay next thing we have to do this is how the structure gonna look like but however even before this we should have created our unit of work pattern basically we're gonna create a class in the interface corresponding interface that Okay, as we as I said before, so next thing we can do in our um, repository, or yeah, even in here, I'm gonna create a new folder here. Creating folder is cheap. All right, I'm gonna say uh, unit of work. Create an, create an interface called I units of work and we're gonna expose method called task we get we need to be able to save we're gonna we're gonna say save async we need to that's the only method for now we're just gonna define this method here okay and then let's go ahead and create a new class that implements that in implements that interface the units of work Uh, this is not what I to my unit of work is define a private Jira context. Let's call it a context here. Let's resolve the namespace here. And just set that into those context equals to context. I like to have my field name as an un underscore. That's the kind of pattern I follow because my parameter is also that I can say my parameter is just a, the variable without context, without underscore. So that's my pattern naming convention that I follow. But of course, you know, everybody has their preferences or maybe kind of like established a uh, convention that people like to use and then of course you know this guy has to um, implement that interface so it has a method hey go ahead and then implement that interface that is the whole point of it so of course you know if you have been using Intuity framework for a long time it's, you know, you're, you're, once you modify your object, you will create object. With the, the objects are not persisted into your database until you call um, save changes method. In this case, we are we can use that async person of it. So we can say save changes async. So so of course you know this is we can async. And we have to say await. Okay, so this you need to work. Though, so the idea. We, so this is how it's going to work. So we're going to expose all our uh, repository as a property into this class here. I'll show you uh, what I mean. Let's see. We have only one for right now. We just we just have one repository, 
one concrete repository called um, a Jamil server repository, right? So let's define a, a email server repository. Suggested the name for us. Okay, kind of cool. Okay, very first thing this we'll just have the getter only. We're not gonna have any setter, just the getter, because um, um, also define little private email repository underscore mail repository. Hey, that's kind of cool. I like it, this old studio. Okay, so we're going to check, okay, if this is the mail's repository object, if it is null, right, if it, that means it has been initialized, we need to create, the, we need to create the new, we need to new it. Um, we're going to say, all right, then that means mail repository equals the new um, mail repository. To be able to mail repository, it has in the in the constructor as it has dependency. Dependency is the context, so uh, we need to set that good context here. And then once we have our object defined, finally we just have to do, okay, go ahead and return this. This mail repository to the e color. This is the pattern we will be follow. So the whole idea about the, 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 the unit of work is basically so that, let's say when you have to process multiple objects, on multiple objects as a, as a kind of, as a transaction type of thing, since they will be sharing because objects are not persisted until this method is called. And all we're doing is basically uh, modifying a bunch of objects and then you're passing that unit of work and eventually calling the same context, it is the same context. So when you call the save async, using the same context and all of your changes are sent out to the SQL server or to your underlying database. That is the idea. Uh, that is the idea about this this pattern. So um, I was my idea I was hoping to finish everything about this tutorial in this video but it seems like it's not really possible. It's it's turned out to be a lot. So in next video I'll show you how to start using this one and how to utilize this pattern to start using into our controller and well next thing we'll be using uh, we will be using the independency injection basically to configure all our you know uh, Jira context our context object in our repository we'll be talking about that feature in our application later thank you so much guys talk to you later bye